Hello, and welcome to the Geo Show. This time, we're going to talk about sedimentary rocks. But first, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, a very friendly doggo, Tyler the Rock Robinson, and Brittany J. Clastic sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary clasts are classified based on their size and variations in class size and have important implications for transportation and deposition. Classic sedimentary rocks range from conglomerate to mudstone. Grain size, sorting, composition, and roundness are important factors that allow us to differentiate classic rocks and understand the processes that took place during their deposition. Class can be classified by size using this chart. Boulders are classified as anything larger than 25 centimeters or about 10 inches. Cobbles range from 6 to 24 centimeters. Pebbles are 2 to 60 millimeters. Sands in smaller class sizes are more easily measured in microns. I know it doesn't sound appetizing, but one way to tell the difference between very fine sands and silts is to grind a small amount up between your teeth. Sand feels like sand. Like you are chewing on large pieces of something, while silt are just gritty. Clays are even finer still and are at maximum 2 microns. Using grain size, sorting, and roundness, you can then classify classic sedimentary rocks made up of these smaller clasts with the help of this chart. Mud rocks are made of fine particles, coals are dominated by organic matter, sandstones are made of sand, conglomerates have large round clasts in a fine grain matrix, and breccias are made of broken angular clasts in a fine grain matrix. Chemical sedimentary rocks. Chemical sedimentary rocks form from ions that were transported in solution and then converted into minerals by biological and or chemical processes. The most common chemical rock, limestone, typically forms in shallow tropical environments where biological activity is a very important factor. Chert and banded iron formations are deep ocean sedimentary rocks. Evaporites form where the water of lakes and inland seas becomes supersaturated due to evaporation. Depositional environments and sedimentary basins. There is a wide range of depositional environments, both on land, like glaciers, lakes, rivers, etc., and in oceans, deltas, reefs, shelves, and the deep ocean floor. In order to be preserved, sediments must accumulate in long-lasting sedimentary basins, most of which form through plate tectonic processes. When basins form, it creates what is called accommodation space which is space that accommodates the deposition of sediments. You can find glacial sediments all over Canada and the northernmost United States. In fact, a lot of these glacial deposits hide geologic formations in those areas. Alluvial fans are created at the bottom of mountains. Evaporites form from evaporation of bodies of water, lacustrine deposits form from lakes, and aeolian deposits form from sand dunes. Fluvial and deltaic deposits are associated with rivers, and marine deposits are associated with oceans. Sedimentary Structures and Fossils The deposition of sedimentary rocks takes place according to the series of important principles, including original horizontality, where everything is initially deposited in a flat plane, superposition, the oldest rocks are at the bottom, unless overturned, and faunal succession. Fossils that have gone extinct will not appear in younger beds unless moved there artificially or at a later date. Like if you found a trilobite buried in Holocene alluvial fans. Sedimentary rocks can also have distinctive structures that are important in determining their depositional environments. Fossils are useful for determining the age of a rock, the depositional environment, and the climate at the time of deposition. For example, filter-feeding animals generally aren't found in areas of the ocean with high dissolved silicas. So you only find them where there are clear tropical waters. Sedimentary structures like mud cracks and wave ripples also tell you about what processes the sediment underwent before becoming a hard rock. Groups, formations, and members. Sedimentary sequences are classified into groups, formations, and members so that they can be referred to easily without confusion. A sequence is a layer of rock that is distinct from layers of rock above and below it. This is also known as strata. Stratum are bound by non-deposition or erosional surfaces known as unconformities. Unconformities are like a gap of missing time in the rock record, and some can span a stretch of time of up to a billion or more years, like the Great Unconformity of the United States. The study of strata is known as stratigraphy, 
and diagrams of strata in an area is called a stratigraphic column. I actually did my undergraduate senior thesis on a particular strata in the Michigan Basin. The link to the video can be found in the description. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please like and subscribe. Go follow me on Facebook and Instagram. With that, I bid you adieu and cheers.